Let's get into the stats. Let's get into definition. Let's get into facts. A lot of feelings were hurt this weekend. Easter, Sunday, Transgender Day of Visibility. Let's focus on the facts. As Ben Shapiro has famously said, facts don't care about your feelings. Let's get into some facts. Here's the fact. Easter, bar none, is the holiest day in the Christian religion. Number one. I believe number two would be Christmas. And then everything else comes far beyond that. So if you're asking yourself, you know, hey, you know, you talked about feelings, emotions. Um, yeah, I understand why Christians might be a little upset that the holiest day of their religion is being hijacked by Transgender Day of Visibility. Pick another day, as Malik said. So I understand that. By the way, what is Easter? Easter marks the resurrection of Jesus three days after his death by crucifixion. I think everybody knows that. But why is it on a particular day? I don't think people know that. Easter, here's how it works. So Easter was on March 31st this year. Sometimes it's in late March. Sometimes yeah. it's in April. Next year it, is April 20th. It's where? April 20th next year. So it's on 420 next year. Yeah. Next year it's on 420. Got to get closer to God, man. You know, you can't make this up. Like, how do you know that it's on 420? Uh, I believe some one of the guys in production was telling me. I believe I, believe I know it, which I guy it was. It was Victor. It was Victor. Um, interesting enough. Let's see if the weed heads are going to, you know, be blazing on 420. By the way, we'll do another episode next year on 420 <laughs> when Jesus and the Bob Marley fans be we all gonna having be the beef. Huh? We all going to be risen. <laughs> we all going to be high <laughs> and rising. You high right now? I'm not low. Nah. Um, anyway, in all seriousness, um, here's how the date works. And by the way, as a Jew, you have to understand, we don't have a particular day. Rosh Hashanah is on a different day every year. Um, Passover, the day that we celebrate Moses, Exodus, Egypt, on a different day every year. Yom Kippur, dude, I'm checking my calendar. I got no clue. Is it September? Is it October? Is it December? We got no clue. At least on Christmas, you know. Christmas Eve, the 24th. Christmas Day, the 25th. You're locked in. You're good. But on Easter, it's you're moving, you're grooving, you're shucking, you're jiving. Here's how it works. The Easter always falls on the first Sunday after the full moon occurs, which is after the spring exodus. Good luck with that. But what they say is that Easter is one of the holidays that is called a movable feast, much like Ash Wednesday or Good Friday or Palm Sunday, where it's moving and it's grooving depending on the moon of all things or the spring exodus. So the earliest that Easter can possibly be is on March 22nd. So it was on the 31st this year. So it was sort of on the earlier side of the spectrum. The latest Easter can be is on April 25th. So next year, it's going to be towards the end of the month, 420, just blaze all baby, um, will be Easter. Um, so that's the date. Um, biblical definition of Easter. I think it's important to discuss this. The biblical definition, not of Easter, not of Easter, the biblical definition of a man and a woman is the following. And this is from the Bible. You didn't think that Saz, your boy, would be quoting the Bible today, but this is one of those episodes. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them, and God blessed them. So for the people who take this stuff very seriously, um, when it comes to man and women and two genders and two sexes and transgender day of visibility, which is the culmination of man becoming woman or woman becoming man, um, newsflash, Christians take this very seriously. Very. Um, the Pope said, quote unquote, God loves us as we are. As a Jew, I got no horse in this race. I'm not a Jesus guy. Jesus was a Jew. I'm not a Pope guy. I'm just believing one God. That's it. That's where monotheism starts and ends for Jews. But I understand my Christian friends, especially my Christian friends at Valuetainment, which we'll discuss where PBD stands on this, 
Tom Ellsworth stands on this. Vinny stands on this. All devout Christians. Not very happy with what's going on. Um, the Pope said, God loves us as we are. Now, um, in, in a spirit of good faith, we read some definitions of how it works in the Bible and on Easter and what Jesus um, has to say. Let's talk about the trans community and where they stand. Now, here's the definition of what it means to be transgender. Transgender is a person whose identity doesn't correspond with the sex given at birth. Now, there's a lot of terminologies and term that gets used for transgender. Here's a few, to name a few. Trans, transitioning, transition, oh, tranny, transsexual, bigender, non-binary, gender non-conforming, gender queer, um, the list goes on. Uh, the definition of transphobic, you hear this all the time. Don't be transphobic. Don't be a transphobe. What's a transphobe? The definition of transphobic, a strong prejudice against transgender. Now, I don't know anybody who's like, I hate them transgenders. I think there's people that are saying, don't upset my faith. Don't upset my religion. Don't question my values. And then here's where I stand on this. Leave the kids alone. We'll show some stats in a second, Gen Z stats. Um, when you're six years old, when you're eight years old, when you're 10 years old, hell, when you're 14, 15 years old, you are so confused. You have no clue what's going on. I wanted to be a dinosaur when I was six years old. Tom always talks about that he wanted to be a pirate. Thank God he didn't cut off his leg and poke out his eye and walk around with a peg leg and an eye patch. Thank God I didn't implant a Stegosaurus Rex into my back. You don't know what's going on. So when you're six years old and you think that as a boy you should be a girl and you start chopping things off, oh my God, the regret, I can't even imagine. That's number one. Number two, and I stand by this, and we'll show a video of the Marines and sports in a little bit. We'll talk about that. The men or natural born men who transition should not be competing against women. Let me tell you something straight up right now. If me and all my boys, five of my homies, me and Malik, went and played basketball against five girls who work here at Valuetainment, I don't care where they played, I don't care what they've done, we're going to beat their ass. We're bigger, oh, yeah. we're stronger, we're faster. <laughs> we're like the, 70, uh, we like the 72 and 10 Bulls probably. <laughs> we're never going to lose. Serena Williams has come out and said this. She said, I'm the best female tennis player of all time. If I played the number 100th ranked man, he'd beat me 6-0-6-0-6-0. We've heard stories about the women's national soccer team, Olympic, playing against the best men's high school athlete soccer team. The men's team beat their ass. Men have a purpose, women have a purpose. I'm not saying that everything is rigid and set in stone, but when it comes to bone density and body structure and hormones and testosterone and size and weight and everything about your body composition, men are just bigger, faster, and stronger. It is what it is. Are there exceptions to the rule? Of course, but there's a rule and there's exceptions. So I think there's a lot of people that get upset when men play in women's sports. We saw it with Leah Thomas in swimming. Can you pull up a picture of this girl on the podium winning, this girl, this person, winning first place? This chick's like 6'5". I think she beat Riley Gaines in this race. Um, it is shocking to look at. Yeah, go to the um, podium. Second, yep, there it is. Go to that picture. Okay, look at the size of this lady. Are you freaking kidding me? I mean, it's a giant. That is a man who transitioned and she beat these two ladies. And first place goes to you, Leah Thomas. Um, by the way, Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner, do you know what he, she was famous for? Do you know why? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, he did. He was a... Uh Olympic gold medicine and decathlon. I he do, won yeah. the, the gold for the best athlete in the world. You competed 
in college, what did you do in college? I did the decathlon in track. You did the decathlon? Yeah. I see okay. why I turned into a woman. That's just tough. So, by the way, out of curiosity, Malik, as someone that, because you went to college in Cleveland. Yep. Um, you competed in the decathlon. What was the highest you ever ranked competing against just the men? Oh, against the men? I got second in my conference that year, uh, 2018, and that was tough. That was a tough feat. And then second amongst, in your conference. Yeah, and then amongst the, uh, amongst the whole entire country, I probably finished, like, top 100. Not top 50, top 100, and that so was still tough. You're legit. Yeah. I mean, you're, you won a college scholarship to what school? University of Akron. You're in Does Akron. It? There he is. That wasn't a gang sign. That was for Akron. Um, you were second in your conference, and you were top 100 in the country. Now, Malik, athlete, you're about six foot. We're about the six same foot. size. Yeah. I probably got a little bit bigger of a belly than you, but we're about the same size. Six foot, you're about 180. What are you? Uh, yeah, 180. Okay. Um, if you transitioned and you were a female competing against the females, how good do you think you would have done? What would your ranking would have been? Oh, not to discredit any of the women track and field athletes out there, I probably would have finished. I probably would have been All-American. I'm not going to say I would have won because there's some, there's some bad athletes out there. Yeah. But I probably definitely would have been an All-American. So meaning you went from second in your division. Second in the conference. Second in the conference. To, top 100 in the country. What would your ranking have been in the country, in your opinion? Potentially probably top 12 if I were to do my same. Only women's top equivalent. 12, bro? Yeah. You wouldn't be top three? No, I'm telling you, some crazy women out there. You'd be surprised. But just to like go for your argument, I, I would still like leap my competition yeah. if, I were, if I were to transition. So you would have gone from 100 to at least top 10, top 12. Yeah. Now, what sport would you say, dude, they got no chance. No girl has no chance against me. And what sport would you say, listen, a girl can compete with me? What would it have been? Uh, ooh. I would say definitely if it were like some type of uh, – Basketball, definitely, I would say like I would. No, 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 in the decathlon. In the decathlon, uh, probably the 100. Uh, There's some fast women out there. So, like, it's hard. If you really were to look up, like, top world leading. What would you marks, have been first place in and what would you have been in 10th place in? Uh, Probably, realistically, I would based off my marks, what I have, I will probably still be 10th place in all of them because those women are crazy. Malik, crazy good. Sell yourself but, a little bit better than that. <laughs> anyway. I'm just being real. Malik's but keeping, at the same you know, time, you like, know the segment Chappelle show when keeping it real goes wrong. Here's your opportunity to just dunk all over everybody, but you're like, nah, I ain't that. Um, anyway, with that being said, um, stay out of the sports, gentlemen. Stay out of the female sports and leave the kids alone. Let's throw a couple, a couple more stats out there. Um, people are saying, dude, are you being overdramatic? Is this a little too much? Is this as prevalent as you're making it seem? Is this really that big of an issue? Well, let's just look at the stats by generation. So ask yourself the following question. Who cares more about what you think about them, an 80-year-old or an 18-year-old? I would say an 18-year-old. An 80-year-old could give two shits what you think about them, they're 80. They're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. 18, they're graduating high school. They're entering the real world. They're going to college. They just went through puberty. They're on social media. They give quite a big of Fs of what you think about them. That's why this stat is so shocking and so revealing. Can you pull up that stat? Here you go. So if you look at this, 7.2% of all U.S. adults identify as LGBT. Um, but if you look at the meteoric rise in the red color, which is Gen Z, it has skyrocketed. In 2014, before uh, Gen Z was even a figment in anybody's eye, the highest amount of people that identified as LGBT in 2014 were millennials at 6%. In 2022, here are the numbers. Traditionalists, who are basically 75 plus, they could give two craps what you think about them. Now, these stats, these polls, were not done in 1950, so that, that it's not like, well, when you were a kid. No, it was done in 2022. 1.7% of traditionalists identify as LGBT. 
2022, baby boomers, basically my parents in their 60s and 70s, 2.7% identify as LGBT. Gen X, which is basically 45 to 60-ish, 3.3%. Um, so this is the nature versus nurture question. At this point, it begins to skyrocket when it goes to millennials and Gen Z. So show the millennials. So millennials, which are in yellow, 11% of millennials identify as LGBT. That's in 2022. This was done a year and a half ago. Here's the most shocking reveal. Gen Z, the youngest generation, the, the TikTok generation, TikTok owned by ByteDance, owned by China, owned by the CCP, 19.7%, almost 20% of the Gen Z kids out there identify as LGBT. So if you're asking yourself, is this natural? Is this natural? Is this nature versus nurture? There's no evidence whatsoever, pull this back up, that this is natural. In 2014, the highest amount millennials was just over 6%, the highest. From 2014 to 2022, in eight years, since social media has come onto the scene and been prevalent with Instagram, and especially with TikTok, the Gen Z generation has been indoctrinated, and it's safe to say, and no disrespect, they are literally the gayest generation ever. And it used to be cool to be gay, it's cool to be gay, all right, cool. Trans is the new trend, and they're capitalizing on it. And we all know that Gen Z is on TikTok. How much of this has to do with TikTok? Um, that's in America, that's in America. But what's going on all around the world? So how does USA compare to other countries around the world specifically on this trans issue? Were you able to pull up that graph? No, nah, I wouldn't open Okay, you can even just show it for a second. By the way, 2% of Americans identify as trans, apparently. 2%. Now, is that high? Is that low? Let me give you some food for thought around the world. 2% America. In Singapore, 3%. Brazil, also 3%. Germany, 4%. Thailand, 5%. We heard about those Thai ladyboys. And Switzerland, of all countries. Switzerland, 6%. So, I don't even understand why that would be. Why would Switzerland be so high? Thailand, we've heard about the Thai ladyboys. The U.S., only 2%. So, this is way more prevalent outside of the United States. Do you have any insight as to why that would be? Uh, maybe I feel like they might be a little more accepting of that hmm. in those countries. Switzerland, pretty liberal country out there. Bottom line is this, and we'll move right along. We started the conversation with Easter versus the Transgender Day of Visibility. Do you know how many LGBT holidays exist? More than I can rattle off by the time we're done with the show. Here's a quick list that we can look at, Malik. You have that? Uh, list of yes, I do. Hold up. Give me two seconds. Pull that up. Got it. Go for it. So if you can punch in just so I can see it. Okay. All right. We have in February the Aromatic Spectrum Awareness Week. Don't even know what that is. Mar in March, you have the LGBTQIA Health and Awareness Week. Going down the list, March, Transgender Day of Visibility. That's the holiday we're talking about. Then you have the International Asexuality Day coming up in April. Hope you have a good time with that. April 13th, International Day of Pink. That's a day opposing homophobia. You have the Day of Silence, the Lesbian Visibility Day. International Day of Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. May 19th, the uh, Agender Pride Day. May 22nd, Harvey Milk Day. May 25th. Parasexual, paromatic, I don't even know what these words are. The month of June, the entire month, Pride Month, boom, enjoy your month. Stonewall Day, June 23rd. June 28th, International LGBTQ Plus Day. What's the difference between everything else with that? 
International Nine Binary Day, International Drag Day, September, great, they gave us August off, September, Bisexual Awareness Week, what's the difference between the other holidays? September, celebrate Bisexuality Day, what's the difference between the September 23rd and 22nd? And 16. Then, just in June was the what was it was Pride Month. Yeah. Pride now in October, month. you have LGBT History Month. They get two months. They get two months. October, you got International Lesbian Day, Coming Out Day. Hey, what a great day to come out. Pick any day, or especially October 11th. You got Fluid Days. You got Visibility Days. You got Pronoun Days. You got Spirit Days. You got Awareness Days. You got Intersexual Awareness Days. You got another month. Entire month of November is a trans awareness. I do it. November 5th, when we're voting, Trans Parent Day. We'll see what happens with that. November 8th, Intersex Day of Remembrance. November 13th through 19th, Transgender Awareness Week. And the Coup de Gras. November 20th, Transgender Day of Remembrance. Guys, I just can't. I can't. You know, I was going to wait till the end. To reveal how I feel, the big reveal, literally. Those are how many days they have, and that's a quick search. They got how many months? They got June, September, right. and October? Guys, you know how they say, you're doing too much. Doing a little too much. Uh, guys, you're doing a little too much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you like that one, click right here to watch the full SawsCast. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.